everything that we've experienced can be our power. Our pain can become our power. And so I work with a lot of sexual trauma. I've had it in my own life. And so that was part of my journey, was on this healing path of healing my trauma and seeing where it was affecting my relationship with myself and with the world around me. Hey, I'm Brooke Jean, therapist, recovering perfectionist, and struggling working mom on a mission to normalize normal. If you're an overwhelmed, high achieving, and secretly anxious mama, struggling to balance it all and on the brink of burnout, you are in the right place. Here is where we talk about hard things like balancing work and family life, mental health, and how to navigate life altering transitions. Nothing is too taboo here. In my conversations, I'll teach you how to let go of who you think you're supposed to be in order to create the life you've always wanted. Get ready to embrace your messy, shed the shoulds, and find freedom through a life unperfected. This is the Unperfected Pod. Hey, Mama. I am so excited and a little nervous for you guys to hear this episode this week on the pod. I interviewed love and intimacy coach Ashley Jones, and we went there with the sex talk. We talked about why, as women, we struggle with pleasure. We struggle to know what we like. We struggle to ask for what we like and ways in which we can overcome that. We talked about the levels of intimacy and different types of intimacy and how to bring your desires into the bedroom with your partner. We talked about ways to get to know yourself and ways to leverage all of your senses to explore what pleasure and intimacy can mean to you. We talked about how do we remove shame, especially for our daughters around our parts. And man, we just went there with the language that's appropriate. And I even called out my own discomfort in utilizing this language. So anyways, we deserve pleasure and play and joy. And I believe that as women, we've been shutting off this huge part of who we are for way too long. And when we tap in and explore intimacy on these levels, I believe we will unlock so much more of who we are, our authentic essence, and what's possible for us. So I hope you enjoy. Welcome back to the Unperfected Pod, where we normalize normal and find freedom in a life unperfected. Welcome back, Mama. I am so excited for the conversation that we're going to have today on the podcast. You asked, I'm delivering. We're talking about sex, baby. Let's talk about you and me. That's been in my head all day. <laughs> And I am going to introduce you guys to my guest. Her name is Ashley Jones. She is with Up Level Love. And let me just read a little bit of her bio so you know who we're talking to today. So as a woman, mother, educator, speaker, coach, surfer, world traveler, and activist, Ashley brings deep passion and dynamic lived experience to the sacred terrain of reawakening love and intimacy in individuals and partnerships. Ashley is passionate about reclaiming the power of feminine sexuality and reigniting our potential for pleasure, joy, and embodied fulfillment. Ashley is here to awaken and activate the joy, pleasure, and love that's possible for you through love and intimacy embodiment guidance. Ashley, welcome. Thank you for being here. I'm already like turned on just by the words in your bio. What does that say? Yes. So happy to be here. Thank you so much, Brooke. And I'm glad that you're already feeling turned on. Yay. The world wants us to be turned on, not only in the bedroom, but in our lives. And so we will shame around this, but the world needs us and wants us to be lit up and turned on. So, yeah. Oh my gosh, that is so true. And we're going to get into that today for sure, that we need to, the world needs us to be turned on and the reasons why we haven't been for a long time. So first, I always like to start with just your story. You know, who, tell the people, who are you, what do you do, and how did you come to that work? Okay. So as you you gave a little bit of my story, but I would say about 
Seven years ago, I have two children. I have a 21-year-old and I have a 16-year-old. And I was deep in motherhood and trying to do all the things and show up in all the ways perfectly or as perfect as I could. And I just came to this breaking point where I realized that I was not living a fulfilling life to me, that I was not being authentic in the things that I really wanted and needed. And I didn't know how to communicate that well with my husband. And it was a really challenging thing, but I came to this breakthrough point. And a lot of it was, I mean, there were so many layers to it, but a lot of it was around intimacy. When we had just gotten into this kind of robotic, habitual thing that I was not enjoying, I was not wanting or desiring sex, our intimacy was very surface level. And I wanted to go deeper, but that wasn't really available to him at the time. And I didn't know how to communicate it. And it just wasn't a conversation that we could have. So I had a breaking, breaking point, breakthrough. And I said, I need to know this part of myself. I can't put it in a lockbox under the bed and just be in service of him. I have to know this part of myself. I'm dying here. And I also, at the same time, my daughter, who was older, was starting to come into her puberty. And I wanted her to have a different experience than I was having. Even though like, I had so many blessings and things were, were good, but the intimate part of my life was not fulfilling. And, and it was really difficult. And yeah, I really, it just spoke to me when she was starting to come into this place of her life. So I wanted to know. So I dove in. I had been working with people for a long time at that point, one-on-one -on -one energy sessions and so forth. And as I dove into my own journey uh, and I started to really open up and speak to my friends, I realized what a massive issue this is for most people in most relationships and most mothers. And so that began my journey to study this deeply, to have my own growth and evolution in that, and then to study and foster this in my practice and my clients. So I love working with mothers because I think it's, we need so much support. And I love what's happening right now in our culture. I think that this, even the Barbie movie that is out there. The, the, so I think there's this shift and change of awareness because we have had too much on our plates for too long, trying to do all these things and not knowing ourselves. And so I think this is a, a shift in our awareness, I'm hoping, in our consciousness as men start to be like, huh, you know, and women are like, oh, because we need to adjust. We need massive adjustments. And our sexuality is this uncharted territory. It's been shrouded in taboo, in conditioning, in religious shame, well, all the things of whatever your experience is that has left us disconnected from one of the most powerful parts of the feminine, our, our magic, our connection to our bodies, our pleasure is all something that is essential to us living a full and important life to having successful relationships and to giving our children the pieces that they need to know to be healthy, vibrant beings and to have healthy relationships with themselves and their partners. So I'm very passionate about it. Yes. And you're absolutely right. This part of our existence as part of our being, our sexuality, our sensuality, our bodies, pleasure. It's a part of us, so many of us that we have just disconnected from, turned off, abandoned, and then tried to turn it back on in service of others. And so I want to start the conversation with, you know, why have we abandoned it, turned up, turned it off, disconnected, from our bodies and intimacy and pleasure in that way from where you're standing. I certainly have some of my own theories around it that many stem from conditioning and then also trauma. And like you said, religious programming, you know, I started hating my body at 14 years old and I'm now in recovery from an eating disorder. And I think that's, you know, where it really started, where I started saying, I'm going to turn off and I'm going to, punish my body 
And then from there, it just, I don't know that I've ever fully recovered and fully leaned into that embodiment. So actually, I also want, I want to give the people, you know, your definition of intimacy embodiment in case this is the first time anyone's hearing that concept. So let's actually start there and then we'll dive into the why we're disconnected from our pleasure centers. So what is intimacy and in, intimacy embodiment to you? Well, let's start with embodiment because lo- okay. this is kind of a phrase that's going around now and people are hearing it more and more, but not a lot of people understand what it is. And this is indicative to why it's so important. So embodiment is the process of being in your body. It's a process of being able to feel and experience what is happening in our physical, mental, and emotional components of what we experience as human beings. So most of us are really trapped in our heads. Our minds are going, going, going. And we're not listening, we're not connecting to the experience that we're having in our physical, emotional, energetic body. And we need to connect them. To have intimacy, to have deeper sexuality, to even listen and have the wisdom that's happening, to have health. We need to be able to listen to the signs and signals of our body. So embodiment is to be able to be in process with your body and the wholeness of it. And embodied intimacy is just that. It's being able to feel and connect to our bodies and to listen and feel our partners and to be able to have emotional intelligence where we can share and open up and expand the depth of bond and experience that we're having on all those levels, physically, emotionally, mentally, and energetically. So all of that is part of the embodied intimacy. I love that. Thank you for bringing that clarification and that awareness, because I agree. It's like a buzzword, which is a good sign that we're waking up. But I think a lot of us are like, that sounds cool, but what does it actually feel like? Or, you know, what is the experience of that? So being in process with your body and gosh, our bodies host so much wisdom. I just love what's possible for us when we reconnect and what will unlock for us when we reconnect. What you were saying before, which is, I think, where you're about to go, is why do we connect from our sexuality? You know, why do women, and especially mothers, why do we disconnect from our sexuality? Well, first of all, I don't think that a lot of us were ever in right relationship with our sexuality for many reasons. Through that. that. So many layers. Yeah. There's so many layers of this. And, you know, whether it's the conditioning that we get from the time that we're little, when we're told to put clothes on, to cover up, that our bodies aren't are somehow shameful and not okay to maybe things that your friends said to you as we're like discovering each other's bodies, you know? And, you know, I don't know if you as a child ever had a friend go, why are your nipples like that? Or your vagina, like, you know, whatever comments that are made when we're little compounded with this cultural aspect of, oh, we're supposed to look this certain way and we're supposed to be thin and we're supposed to be, you know, all these expectations that we have put on us as women combined with if you're raised religiously, but even if you aren't raised religiously, it's still indoctrinated into our culture around shame around our sexuality and our bodies. Combined with whatever experiences you've had that are hurtful and harmful, if you've had sexual trauma, even a lot of us don't consider that we've had sexual trauma, but we've had a lot of coercion. We've come to this place of you know, maybe having sex when we didn't want to, but we didn't say no. So we've overridden our body's no a lot to have sex, even if it wasn't sexual trauma. We carry that in our bodies. Our body keeps a score. Highly recommend that book. If you've heard of it, read it to understand this better. But our body holds on to every experience that we've ever had. So we often feel numb in our bodies and we're not able to feel the the pleasure and the sensation even in kissing even in touching and holding each other and then when it comes to you know sex penetration most women have been having penetrative sex too soon our bodies are not ready they're not turned on enough so then we're holding that experience as well and our bodies shut down and they hold this tension tightness numbness and then when we become mothers We have this whole other aspect of being overwhelmed, often exhausted, tired, and often in service of our partners rather than being in service or in connection with each other. And so sex becomes this other thing on our to-do list that is 
too much time and effort and it's exhausting. And so we just go, ugh, we put it in the back burner. We go, ugh, I just can't do that. I don't want to do that because we're not getting nourished from it. We're not getting satiated from it. We're not getting the very elements of what, when we are in right relationship, when we're in healthy connection to our sexuality, it actually really allows us a lot of healthy components to our lives on many different levels. And often mothers, because of the conditioning, we go, well, we can't be sexual beings. We sometimes, we have this belief system of like, I'm a mother and a good mother isn't a sexual being. And they, we often like put ourselves in these two different categories. I'm a mom, I'm not sensual or sexual anymore because that was my 20s or that was my, you know, the past and I'm not that anymore and I'm going to put on my conservative clothes and conservative attitude and I'm going to go forward with that part of me being way down there and then our partners often, if you know, depending on whatever dynamic you're in, are often like, I want more sex. And we're like, ugh, you know, because it becomes needy or it, it becomes this entitlement piece. Even if you're in a great relationship and you love your partner, it's like this is the cultural conditioning that we're both, unfortunately, put into. And so then the dynamics become really uncomfortable. And if you have a needy partner in that way, that becomes even more of a turnoff. And if you're anything like me, when I was in this stage of my life, everything my partner did felt like a turnoff. <laughs> like the way he walked, the way he ate, the way he did the dishes, the way he, you know, drove, like everything. <laughs> I think every single mom who's listening is like, yeah, everything's a trigger. Uh-huh. Not even just a turn off, a trigger. The way you're breathing, your tone uh-huh. of voice, the way you uh-huh. look at your phone, the way you don't, mm-hmm. I mean, it's like, and it's been adding up. It's been mm-hmm. adding up, honey. And this yeah. doesn't turn us on and make us want to have sex. No. No. Yeah. So we're these components of being overwhelmed, exhausted, and then having our partners independent, even if you love them, but you know, you're just at this uh, of your life where, yeah, everything that they're doing is a turnoff and a trigger. And then they're like, have sex with me. And you're like, ugh. Um, It gets gets really, really, really tricky. And I think that a lot of mothers, and I would say women in general, they turn off their sex going, I'm just not sex. I'm my libido's low. And I want to challenge women with this because I really think that it's not that our libido is low. It's that we're not actually having the experiences that we want to be having, period. Totally. We're not having, and we don't even know what our turn on truly is authentically. And I mean, authentically, like you might've had experiences in your past where you're like, I was so turned on. I'm, you know, or I'm, I was so wild or whatever those but then you put that in the wild basket. Oh, that's when I was wild and crazy. And I don't, you know, that's bad and wrong. And I'm not that, I'm a mom. So there's these components. And I really, I want to challenge you. Like, I think that most of us just don't really know our authentic, sensual and sexual expression. And it has to evolve and grow. We're not who we were in our, you know, in our younger years. We are wherever you are right now. You know, I'm 48 years old and I feel the most sensual and most sexual in a very healthy, balanced way than I ever did in my 20s when I was, you know, doing some of the things because I know who I am now and I've gone down this journey. But I think that this is a journey that uh, a lot of people don't know how to embark on. And so they just put it away. They don't know how to have the conversations. There's emotions and ego and, you know, all of those things involved and our needs not being met. So yeah, it's multi-layered. Mm-hmm. And yeah, so we're going to have to get into that. How do we start to rediscover and re-explore what we like and who we are sexually? And then how do we share that with our partners? Because I completely agree with you. It's not that we don't want to have intimacy and have good sex. It's that we're not having intimacy and good sex. So it's just another thing to do. Or you know, gender roles can be the other way around. Like I have a higher libido than my partner, but it's still the same where we're just wanting intimacy, but we're struggling to get there because we haven't invested in the layers and the buildup of the intimacy. And there's a lot of reasons for that, but I want to make sure the listeners hear like a lot of the key reasons why we don't know what turns us on anymore. We don't know how to express it or articulate it is because like she said, conditioning shamed our bodies. Many, if not most of us had 
very unpleasant, if not borderline traumatic, initial sexual experiences. One in four of us have sexual abuse and or assault, and I believe that is underreported. And, you know, we start to hate our bodies for because we carry all of this trauma and also generational trauma. And then people aren't really interested in the layers of intimacy and we just roll into service mode. And now we feel like we're too far gone and it's all lost. And this is why we don't know who we are and what we want and how to, you know, feel and accept and really be present with pleasure anymore. And that is, that means we're not living life. We're not living in vitality. We're not living fully if this part of us is closed off. So let's roll into some things we can do, starting with obviously ourselves in that embodiment to rediscover and reconnect with what lights us up and turns us on. Yes. Okay, let's go there. So I just want to say that we're this culture of instant gratification. And so we have to kind of undo that thinking as well for us to embark on this journey. And it starts with, and that's why I do embodiment work. That's why I, the, the avenue, combined with other practices, but that's why like the, I think the avenue for us to really open up to our authentic and healthy and vibrant intimacy and sexuality is through our us understanding our bodies, nourishing them, fostering their health and appreciating them, whatever size, shape, whatever, wherever you are. And this is one of the most beautiful things that I get to witness in my work is women embracing and loving and listening to their bodies, whatever shape, size, age they are. And through that, through our own acceptance, appreciation, honoring, of our own body. If this is an individual journey first, for us to embark within ourselves, to see ourselves differently than we've been per- perceiving and talking and to ourselves. Like we're often quite brutal to our bodies. So it's combined our experiences combined with our self-deprecating thoughts and words about ourselves cut us off from our pleasure and our joy. And it and the body holds on to that experience or that imprint, that negative imprint. So really, how do we get there? How do we start by connecting to and appreciating and learning to love our bodies in a whole new way? And, and we can work on, you know, being more healthy and all those things. But it really like right now, today, here in this moment, you know, my 48-year-old body to like be able to be, to be able to touch our bodies, to be able to like thank you and feel and sense and understand and to heighten our sensations. So our sense, our sensory body, to be able to feel more, to awaken to our breath is another important component. So I take women through a journey around discovering and feeling and connecting with our bodies and our breath in a whole new way. That take, And then we can teach our children that too. Because if we're sitting there talking about negatively about our bodies, our kids are going to take that on. And they're going to continue that negative cycle of not liking and appreciating who you are. This is the bo- this is the vehicle of your soul as I see it. Our bodies, this is a gift that we have to be here. And you know, we often are wanting to be something that we're not. And then when we're wanting to be something that we're not, we're in war, we're at war with ourselves. We're not in a- appreciation and understanding and, and, and love in a loving relationship with our bodies. So um, getting to be in acceptance of the reality of the body that you're in and then not only accepting it, but being like, wow, this is a gift. Wow, I get to do all these things in my life. I have this, I do have health and vitality. I can move. I can do all these things. Okay, now next level. Now it's like the starting to come home to ourselves to feel more, to heal the trauma that's there means that we stop giving it power and that we release it from our body or we transform it into more health and vitality. Everything that we've experienced can be our power. Our pain can become our power. And so I work with a lot of sexual trauma. I've had it in my own life. And so that was part of my journey, was on this healing path of healing my trauma and seeing where it was affecting my relationship with myself and with the world around me, where I held a lot of fear 
and would make myself, try to make myself small. I'm six one. <laughs> I'm very tall, but I would try to make myself small and try to make myself not be seen because I stuck out so much and would get attention and that felt unsafe to me. And then how do we find our way, right? As women, we're told not to get attention, not to be to this or to that or all these things. How do we navigate that in a way? And how do we navigate that for our children? Because most of the things that we say to our children are trying to keep them safe. But in keeping them, trying to keep them safe, we don't give them the power that they have. We come from fear. And so I am really a proponent of if we give our ourselves, if we connect with ourselves and empower ourselves authentically in our sensuality and sexuality as we are today, and that continues to evolve and grow, how I show up now in my sensuality and my sexuality is completely different, you know, than I did in the past. And we get to teach that to our children and show them that in a healthy way. Then they have the power to be more discerning rather than to be in fear, make those decisions out of fear. They're empowered in their decisions because they know their worth. They know their pleasure. What's that? Can you give us an example of that? Because I totally see what you're saying where we're just like, even just today, my daughter is going to school, she's wearing a dress and we always have to have shorts on underneath, pants on underneath and, you know, make sure when you're playing at the playground and you're flipping over the bars. Is that an example of where, like, where can we be shifting the messaging to our children from like shameful your body is something to cover up and protect because it is to that body autonomy, body discernment. Where can we like give us an example just so we can really put this into play? Because I feel this right now. It's really resonating with me. And I think I'm probably giving the wrong messaging, honestly, with my girl. So where can I put this into play? Thank you for giving that example. And it's such a confusing world for us women because men can be have their shirts off and they can be at the the beach and young boys can, you know, but our little girls who don't even have breasts, not even close to having breasts have to be covered up. And so that's the first realm of shame that we usually feel like, why is, why do I have to wear a shirt? My brother doesn't. Why do I have to, you know, wear shorts, leggings, whatever, and not flip upside down and what, you know, hide all of this. So it is. And of course, right. You're just like, oh, I want to, I don't want some predator out there seeing my child and, going after them. Yes. Yes. So how do we do this? So, okay. So if I had a redo, because I didn't know what I know when my kids were young. And I remember my daughter at one point being probably three and us being at a hotel. I live in Hawaii. So kids are naked at the beach very freely over here. It's a non-issue when they're very young. And we went to a hotel and I was like, you have to, and she wanted, she didn't want to put on her swim diaper and her like thing. And I was like, you have to do, you have to wear a swimsuit here. And she was so confused, like, why, why? She kept asking me, as kids do, why, why? And I remember saying, I don't know, baby. It's just the rules, and I'm so sorry. Like, I really felt for her in this moment of, like, this painful, like, why? She's been so free and so in her, you know, bliss and happiness, and now she had to wear a swimsuit, and she really didn't want to. So how do we do this now? If I had to redo, I would tell my daughter, like, Your body is so beautiful and it's amazing. And this part of your body, your vulva, your vagina is you want to protect it and keep it covered. You don't want to get dirt and dust and things in there because you want it to be healthy. And this is your body and it's a part of your body that you don't want others to touch without your full permission. And right now, that is only mommy or daddy who are helping you clean this part of your body, period. Mm-hmm. You know, right now, nobody else gets to touch this part of your body because it is so sacred and important for you. Mm, yes, I love and so, that. So, and empowering our kids to think for themselves, I think, is really important, you know, and to be like, OK, so if you're in this area and you're rolling around on the play on the handlebars like she was or whatever that play thing is, it's yeah. like, OK, is that going to hurt? Is that going to hurt your vulva? And, and giving them the proper language about their bodies. Yes. Oh my gosh. Not giving them like your hoo hoo or your wee wee or whatever. It's like, let's give them the proper information. Like instead of saying your down there parts, you know, your private parts. It's like, this is your vulva. The inside of you is your vagina. These are your labia, your lips. Like we need to give them the information right away. 
when they're younger, just like we're like, this is your nose and this is your eyelashes and this is your eye. We need to give our children the proper names of the parts of their body so that they can, this is your clitoris. These are your lips. This is your, you know, this is where your peak. So we can just inform them so they know their bodies and they're not, they don't have this shot, this haze of like, not sure what this part of my, it's of my private parts like down there, but I don't know, you know, what the different parts are. When we know our body, and then as they get older, you can start to communicate about what feels good, right? If they're playing with themselves, instead of shaming them, oh, so, you know, oh yeah, you know, what's happening over there? Does that feel good to you? And then they go, yeah, you know, and go, yeah, that does feel good, huh? There's a lot of pleasure that can come from that part of your body. It's actually one of the most pleasurable parts of your body. And you just talk to them like that. And to have that pleasure and that, that feel good part, you actually just want to be in the privacy of your room to do that. And so, you, you know, you just don't want to do that around other people. You want to do that with your, just with yourself right now. And then just like give them the privacy, like take them to their room and say you get to enjoy your body there because it's really important for us to understand and feel pleasure. Yes. And that's how we learn. We learn from touching ourselves. It's self-pleasure. And when we say masturbation, masturbation actually means to hurt yourself. It comes oh, from wow. that religious indoctrination. So to give permission and to, and with like the parameters of what can keep them safe, but not from fear, but from like, this is your body. This is, you get to enjoy this pleasure in your own private space. And it's beautiful. And you can even say, there's all these nerves that go into your clitoris. And you can say that clitoris is where you feel all that amazing pleasure. Isn't that awesome? It's so exciting. Yeah. And like celebrate them in their pleasure and also let them know this is something you don't do at school, around other people. You do it in the privacy of your space because this is your body and it's private. It's just for you right now. It's just yours. So that we teach them that they're actually the masters of their pleasure. Nobody else. Even as adults, we put all this like, it's how my partner touches me. It's what he does. It's what other people do. It's all these external stimulants, which are part of it. But we don't take ownership for our pleasure because we've been disconnected from it for so long. Well, and I can tell how disconnected from my pleasure I am with how uncomfortable I am even just saying the word clit clitoris right here, right now. That is a problem. It's just it's a, a problem. body part, right? But I love the educational piece. I love the teaching them how sacred it is. I love giving them the autonomy and the power. I love normalizing. I love teaching them and celebrating and affirming pleasure. And even if you're like me right now and you're like, wow, this is, I'm tingling in my body. It's making me uncomfortable. It's just an indication that we have some reprogramming to do to set a better stage for our kids. And that's why I'm saying out loud what I'm experiencing in this very moment, because it's just showing me wow, it's not just that I'm bad at sex. I have like layers of work to do around intimacy and even being comfortable utilizing the language and then the self-exploration and the self-pleasure. And that's an important part of our conversation to you mamas out there who are like, how do I enjoy sex? How do I get better at sex? How do I improve intimacy? You gotta touch yourself. You gotta play with yourself. So what do you have to say about that? What are some things we can do to help ourselves with that? Because I know what we were first talking about was just starting to honor and accept your body and following what feels good in your body. And the one thing I wanted to add to that that has helped me in my little bit, teeny tiny bit of work I've done around this is like using all my senses. So like having certain smelling candles and baths and lotions and rubs and massages and certain meditations that turn me on with the, you know, the window open and the breeze and the smells and the sounds like really following what feels good, being out in nature, being under the sun. If those things, just getting curious about what feels good in my body that's maybe non-sexual, even though it is sensual and it could lead to sexual exploration. That's where I'm learning. Like, I really like to be rubbed. I really like smells. I really like luxurious things. They make me feel sexy. 
the sun and water turns me on like meditation freaking turns me on and to me that's like a safe introduction to maybe this next level that we're going to talk about which is well now how do i start to play and explore my body at a deeper level okay yeah let's talk about that for a minute so like you're saying we've got to get more comfortable with our own bodies and experience so being able to say the words without there being this this discomfort which there was for me too and if we don't get more comfortable, that's just a reflection on our own experience. And to look at that, like where we are uncomfortable is usually areas that we need to grow. Yeah. And to have any shame or discomfort around our vulvas, uh, around our vaginas, is, it carries a lot of sadness to me. And it's something that we pass on to our children. So being able to say it, be, look at those different parts of our, to look at it and then to be able to touch. But let me just start with how do we grow our sensation? How do we be able to experience and touch ourselves in a way that feels good? So most of us, maybe before doing work in this realm, you know, self-pleasure slash masturbate, I don't like to use that word, in a very specific way, chasing after that orgasm, we go usually straight to our clitoris. I'm going to speak really bluntly here, but we go straight to our clitoris, we rub it a certain way, it brings us to, to orgasm, and that's it. We're tensing, we're pushing, we're pushing our energy down and out in an orgasm and in our self-pleasure practice. And we're missing out on so much, so much. So just like you said, there's all these other things that feel like a turn on and they feel really good being in the water and nature and meditation and all these things. Yes, those are all components of our senses, right? Of being able to quiet our mind or feel the water and like life is sensual. Nature is sensual. Mm -hmm. Even like the sweetness with our children and we like put it into like the sweetness of holding our babies and nursing them. Like that's a sensual, intimate moment. It's not Absolutely. sexual, it's sensual. And so we don't often label it as that, but it is. You know, we have deep intimacy with our children, especially when they're little. It's different than sexuality, but it's still intimate. It's actually divinely intimate, and that's one of the components. Sometimes we get so much intimacy from our children that we don't need it or don't want it from our husbands, even though it's different. Yes. Or our partners. Yes. So, so what do I do with the people that I work with? We slow down and we explore our bodies all over not just our clitoris. It's like, what does it feel like to even touch your hands, you know, to like let the sensation of your fingertips, like there's so much sensation and we breathe and we slow down. And then if you take that touch up your arm and you breathe and then you feel in the inside of the elbow here, right? It's one of the most erogenous zones on a woman, right? Feel that, just let yourself breathe and like close your eyes for a moment. Just feeling your own touch. Yeah, I like that. So in self, in a self-pleasure practice that I give the women I work with, it's like we don't, you don't go to your vulva at all for a while. We're just going to like touch your face, touch your neck, touch, slow down, set a timer for five, ten minutes, and just explore your body with nourishing, loving touch. We love on our children. We love on our animals. We love on our partners. But we hardly ever give our own selves sensual, connected touch. And that is part of like changing the relationship with our bodies as well. Because when we start to feel, oh my gosh, there's so much sensation in my hands. And oh my gosh, that feels so good. Wow, my hands are amazing. You know, and then our, our oh wow, there's so much sensation there. Wow, there's sensation. Because we need to slow down. Slow, slow down. And often we're just in this rat race in, in life. Go, 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 go. Do the things. Wake up. Get the kids. and get Right? But it's in those moments when we slow down to enjoy like a funny moment with our children or even with ourselves to meditate or to go for a walk or a swim or whatever it is that we like when we can stop the mind and just like be with the clouds that are outside and the wind coming across our bodies or whatever it is, you know, the smell of a flower or essential oil where we can open and expand that our availability to experience pleasure. So we need to like heighten and bring connection to our different senses. Smell, what we hear, what we taste, what we touch, and our breath is a really big component of that too because as we go in our busy lives, our breath gets really shallow. And we, we're not aware of it, but our breath gets really shallow and tight and then our body gets really tight and then the sensation shuts down. So as we breathe a big breath and as we're touching ourselves and we're bringing just 
sensual connection to our bodies and we're breathing, we can start to open up our senses and feel more. And something that I guide a lot of my couples with is like just start taking deeper, fuller breaths while you are just even in the makeout process, in the foreplay process, start taking deeper, fuller breaths. Because we often like clench and push and reach for that orgasm. And there's this whole other way of being able to expand the energy up your body, the sensation of pleasure up through your body and to bring that orgasm up. And then that will allow you to have more and more pleasure and more orgasms, which is really healthy for our bodies to be able to do that. And I just want to mention on this theme of, of orgasm, I was one of those women that felt like I thought I was broken 15 years into my marriage. I'm like, I'm not really experiencing pleasure. Like I can have maybe an orgasm, but it's a specific way, a specific thing. And most of the time I just wasn't and I wasn't experiencing internal orgasms. I wasn't, I, I don't know. People would talk about all these things. I would hear other women talk about it or on social media. And I'd be like, are they just lying? Because I am not experiencing that at all. Yeah. And, and I felt broken. I felt yeah. broken. There's a lot of women that are probably resonating with that right now. They feel broken, but it's because... The orgasm, at least from what I'm hearing from you, isn't just from the penetration of the same stuff. It is like the emotional connection and then the buildup and the being in our bodies and the going slow and the opening up and feeling all the things. How do we share that with our partners, especially in the context? Because I know what moms are thinking. I would love to slow down, but it's like we're working parents. We're just trying to get it in. We're like in the closet trying to both orgasm in five minutes. How do we communicate this please slow down or what feels good in our bodies to our partners within that context of we feel like we're rushed and in a time crunch with everything in our lives? Why would sex be any different? Or do we just need a mindset shift around that and we need to prioritize it? I don't know. What are your thoughts on that? Well, we definitely need to take better care of ourselves. So to start to give ourselves more self-care, even in tiny little increments, because I know as busy moms, when your kids are young and you're doing all the things and it's really hard to, you're like, I don't have time to go get a massage and I don't have time to do meditate and, you know, all those things. So there's really small incremental ways that you can give yourself self-care throughout your day. How do we start to communicate that? Well, First, it starts with us giving ourselves that time, even in little increments, even in that like five or 10 minutes, we just give ourselves five or 10 minutes to like have connection with our, ourselves and our body. I have a really beautiful practice called shower love. Everybody showers most days. Just give yourself 30 seconds to a minute of when you soap up your body and you're cleaning your body to slow down, take breaths, 30, 30 seconds to one minute where you're like actually kind of massaging your body and breathing into where you're making contact. As you clean your body, you're bringing it connection, love, feeling, you're slowing down. Just that, just one minute in the shower will yes. connect you to your body, connect you to your breath, allow you to appreciate and love your body more. So then how do we connect with our partners? It starts with us being in deeper connection with ourselves. And then we start to talk to our partners about this and just say, you know, honey, I am really wanting to discover what is my pleasure. And I've been rushed and I've been busy and I know our lives are so intense and full, but I'm wanting us to see how we can slow down and I'm wanting to see what is available for us in pleasure and intimacy and sex. Are you willing to explore this with me? So we invite them into the process with our own curiosity. We have to be able to communicate it. We have to be able. And that's where we like, whenever we feel discomfort with saying clitoris or vulva or vagina or whatever the things are, or sex, we have to like, okay, how do we dismantle this, this piece? How do I come into right relationship with my body? And then how can I communicate what I'm needing and wanting and desiring with my partner and coming from that place of like, and celebrating what they do do that you love. I love so much the way that you touched me here, the way that you kissed me this way, or whatever the things are that you really like that they do, celebrating them. I love and saying them. I love this. I really like this. This feels so good. 
verbalizing the things that you want. So one of the traps that we also get into in long-term relationships is that we're like, I've been married or I've been with them for however X many years. They should know. We play this guessing game and we get pissed. We get angry. I know I used to be so frustrated. Oh, why doesn't he know this already? I've told him. I have told him. But usually in a not kind way (laughs) or, you know, it was how I would communicate out of frustration. Totally. And so I learned how to verbalize. This feels really good when you do this. I just want you to know that I love how you touch me here or do this. And something else that I would like more of or I think would also feel good is X, Y, and Z. And you have to be specific. I really like, and I might make somebody uncomfortable here, but when you've been with your husband for or partner or whatever it is for however long, if you can't tell them, I really like when you touch my clitoris lightly at first with a broad touch at first, and then if you could lightly go a little quicker, that feels really good to me. And just pause sometimes. Like literally, you have to map it out. And you have to do it several times usually. And us women, we change every day. Like I feel for men. Like we are not just a one size fits all. If you are having your cycle, you know, you have this month of sometimes you're ovulating, sometimes you're not, and then you're bleeding. Like we have these cycles. Some days we want more gentle, soft connection. And sometimes we want more like erotic, crazy play. Like we are full range. And so to be able to communicate with your partner and be like, right now I'm feeling really tender. And I would just like like the holding and soft touch and like really slow lovemaking. You know, to be able to communicate that. Or right now I'm feeling really playful and I want to like be a little wild. And for them to like, we are the feminine. We are that range. The masculine gets to hold it and they have their range too. And we get to meet each other and it can be this whole new exploration that is really fun and it doesn't have to take forever And I think it is also really healthy to give yourselves like intimacy dates that are a couple hours long. Like if you have children and you get a babysitter and you go to dinner and then you come home and have like you do the same thing. Like stop doing that. Like give yourselves two hours like in the bedroom. It doesn't have to be sex the whole time, but just exploring, just loving each other, communicating, talking, massaging. Yeah, I have a lot of practices I give couples, but to grow your intimacy, to grow your sexuality, we have to grow. We, send us, we tend to stay stagnant and be very habitual in these ways. And often men get into these really habitual because it's like, if it works, don't change it. <laughs> and so, yeah, and to bring your partner along for this ride can be really kind of scary at first, but often so fun. And then you get to have what you're desiring instead of holding it all in and being angry and frustrated, you know, it's, and to be gentle with your partner about that and to invite them in and come from I statements. I'm wanting to explore this part of me. I'm wanting to explore this, what's available and possible for us. I want us to have a really beautiful, intimate and sexual life together. And yeah, are you willing to explore this with me? Yes. Invite them. Let them be of choice in it. And they want us to be enjoying that. They want to experience us embodied and in, in our pleasure and in our playfulness and in our joy. Like most of them anyways. And if they don't, that's a whole separate conversation. But most of them will be like, I thought you'd never ask, you know, for me to join you in this experimentation and even though it might feel a little awkward to take that step yeah i think underneath it all we really long for is this really close intimate connection with our partners but the world has hardened us and made us like look away and so even though it can be really hard to turn around and face each other and lean in it's really truly i believe underneath it what we all long for you know if we are with a partner who is safe and it's a good relationship or whatever it is but i think we're all just deprived of this deep connection and this deep intimacy and i also love asking our partners what intimacy means and looks like to them and don't make assumptions like honestly i think my partner is more like into 
emotional connection and support and intimacy and I'm more sexual. And so instead of just like placing us in these gender roles and making assumptions, making space for all of it and normalizing it and celebrating it and then also being open to what's possible that we haven't even discovered or explored yet. But, you know, being curious about it and playful with it, but also staying away from assumptions, because I know assumptions has really placed barriers, at least for me in my intimate relationships, for sure. Yes, definitely. Open, opening up that conversation, getting out of those norms, because it does go both ways. And that's the other thing you mentioned this, like, we often go, oh, we know what sex is, like, penis and vagina, da, 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 you know, but we don't. I'm going to tell you right now, there are so, there's so much that most women have and men have no idea of what is possible or even how to access different areas of our body because we can't talk about it. And a lot of our anatomy is internal. So we can't see it. So it's a mystery. We're like, hmm, I don't know what that, what G spot, what, where is that? What is that really? And cervical yeah. orgasm. You know, there's so much that's there, but if we can't even talk about it, we're not going to know. So we've been really ripped off when it comes to education around our bodies, especially our pleasure anatomy. And so when we can breach that and go, oh, huh, what is this? And we can invite our partner like, hey, honey, I'm curious to explore my G spot. And I don't even know if I totally know where that is. And I kind of want to figure that out. Like, are you open to that? You want to explain this part with me? Yeah, just like bring them along. Get curious. And even if you're fucking 50, be like, I don't know where my G spot. Like, yeah, I, I don't know. Maybe that's it. Maybe, it, you know, be curious and be able to have that communication and also ask them, what do you want to know more about? What are you curious about? How can I know your body more as well? Yes. Um, and to, to have it be a mutual exploration. And then we have to also get comfortable in sharing our desires and like where people might have different desires, right? There might be like, like you, you know, your husband's more emotional and he wants to feel that emotional connection. And you're like, I just, well, I just want to have sex or whatever it is for you, yeah, you know? Basically. And you're like, okay. And so you can be like, okay, how can I drop into his emotional connect into the emotional connection he desires and how can he like meet me in the sexual play or whatever that you're desiring and to be able to speak about that and to open up just get out of that one lane that we've been in and to open it up and sometimes the areas that we think are really scary or weird or taboo or bad are not weird bad taboo at all and everything can be done with love and everything can be done with consciousness. And we also have to like be with like, am I available? Am I open to this? And if you are, great. And if you're not, great. Yes. Our no's are important. Our no, like, you know, if your partner wanted to choke you and you're like, I'm a no, that's great. Be a no. Yes. You do not have to do something. Yeah. You know, at the same time, you could be like, well, I don't want to be choked. But like, maybe if you did it lightly, like, I don't know, could we explore what that might be? If I really communicate to you, if you trust your partner and you feel like you could communicate what that is, then you could maybe try something that might have been totally in your taboo box and be like, oh, wow, that was actually really nice. You did that lightly. That felt good. That felt kind of exciting. Wow. I didn't even know that. You know. <laughs> so in other words, there's a wide range of normal of tricks and things we can do in the bedroom, my loves. It's not bad. It's not shameful. It's with love and consciousness and in the sake of pleasure, it's all fair game. So I think like that is like such a beautiful place to end. And also your no is more than okay and respecting your body and your boundaries and your desires as well. I want to make sure people hear that too. So that is such a beautiful place to end. There's been so many nuggets in this conversation that can help women rediscover their sensuality, their sexuality, their intimacy and their embodiment. And tell all the people where they can connect with you. If they are ready to dive into some more of this work, where should we send them to? Okay, so you can find me on social media at Uplevel Love. It's one word, Uplevel Love with two L's. And that's on Instagram, 
I'm on TikTok, not a whole lot. I'll be expanding that and Facebook. And then my website is uplevellove.com. And I have a women's program starting in October that is a virtual program, but really dives into all of this, these aspects of power, pleasure, and passion within yourself. And then I love working with couples. I do intimacy upgrades with couples that are really beautiful. You can do them virtually or in person if you're on Koi. So yeah, I love this work so much and it's exponential in the transformation that happens very quickly in the embodiment work. So it's beautiful. It's so amazing. And just thank you, Ashley. Thank you for being a leader and helping women remember who we are and what our bodies can do and feel. And I do, I feel passionate that when we start to unlock these more divine feminine components, we're going to just expand in so many beautiful ways that really are, you know, going to help us become who we are, be the better moms that we want to be, drive the change that we want to see in the world. We can't do these, we can't have these big missions and visions and movements when we're keeping half of ourselves locked up in a box. And so for me, this part of the work is really important. It's important. And we need to show up full bodied and full energetic, like full energy. And so many of us have been closed off in this arena for so long. So thank you for sharing your wisdom and your story and your passion with us today. You guys go give her a follow on Instagram. And um, I'll also invite you into the Mommy's Mental Health Matters private Facebook group. And if you have follow-up questions or topics you want to explore, you can access her in that group. And she, I'm sure, will be happy to be a resource for you. But thank you, Ashley Jones. And for those of you who tuned in today, I hope we turned you on just a little. And if we just made you uncomfortable, we also showed you where you can grow. And that's beautiful, too. I love you so much. We'll see you same time, same place, same place next week. Bye for now. Thank you so much for listening to the Unperfected Pod. I hope this episode helped you feel a little less alone and a little more inspired to be you. If you like what we're doing here, I would so appreciate that you subscribe, rate, and review this podcast. If you do, share the episode on Instagram and tag me, at Brooke Jean Unperfected, to enter to win a one-to-one laser coaching session. Also, feel free to join me in my private Facebook community, Mommy's Mental Health Matters, where we continue the conversation. Thanks again for being here and see you in next week's episode.